Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22 and we're here in Phillip Island with Marco Simoncelli starting from the back of the grid. Now unfortunately in this particular sort of category which Marco Simoncelli can be used in there is only eight riders so unfortunately it's going to be an eight rider battle here in Australia for the Phillip Island Grand Prix. But now to the left hand side for the Southern Loop up on the inside of Colin Edwards hanging him out to dry there to the right hand sides. We'll bring on the power for the left hand side going outside of uh, Southern Loop now getting right into the rear of Danny Pedrosa there we're just ahead of Andrea De Vizzi also on circuit as we go to the left hand side for Stoner Corner for the first time of asking as we get really close to the rear of Danny Pedrosa and almost through upon the inside of the Spanish Samurai so really close but not close enough to make a lunge going into Honda but now into turn 5 and now into Siberia for the left hand return 6 as Valentino Rossi has a good old look around his shoulder this one is certainly going to start to explode now, to mention why I've chosen Simoncelli here today is just simply because I was looking at some of his older races and I realised he only had two podiums in MotoGP. What could have been? So, speaking of what could have been, well, this is what he did. I mean, he took the podium here in Phillip Island as we dive up on the inside of Danny Pedrosa with a bit more contact with Jorge Lorenzo for his troubles. And not particularly friends when uh, Marco was alive, uh, Jorge Lorenzo and Simoncelli, but... In the video game, no rivalries to be had, but now I guess it's exploding here in Phillip Island. There's massive contact now and into turn 10, just after Lukey Heights here in Australia. But yes, speaking of Marcos and Michelli, he took two podiums with the MotoGP 1 in the fantastic Grand Prix in the Czech Republican Grand Prix of Bruno and here in Phillip Island. So I'd like to do either one better and get the top position or take the second place once again, just like Marcos and Michelli did back in. 2010. But now to the left hand side for the Southern Loop, we're going to be charging down here to the left hander once more with Valentino Rossi getting away ever so slightly. Four tenths of a second lead as Lorenzo just positions the Yamaha exactly where Subincelli wants it. So we're going to go really hard on the brakes now into Honda for turn four as we keep it really nice and tight there. Really clean as you like as we went onto the right hand side there. Very important to get the braking marker there, otherwise you really scupper your chances going into turn five and then into Siberia. You're on the back foot if you get it wrong. So I'm sticking with power setting 2 in this one because I did find that power setting 3 gave me a little bit too much of an advantage against the AI. Now of course I've been mentioning it for a while now. The AI in MotoGP 22 is not up to par. It's uh, very disappointing. It's way too easy to win in some of the higher category bikes. So we dive on the inside of Rossi for the very first time. Simoncelli takes the lead here into the Phillip Island Grand Prix but still not able to hold it. Rossi too strong around the outside. Of course Rossi 2007 Yamaha right now. Fantastic combination, didn't yield a championship, but still very close, just being beaten by Casey Stoner. But now bringing on the power, getting caught on the rumble strip a little bit there. But I could use power setting three, but as mentioned, I'm going to stick with two for now as we two thousand of a second slower than Valentino Rossi on that particular lap. So Super Sick is certainly charging down the Doctor in first position. Lorenzo in second, excuse me, third position. As Simoncelli occupies the second position as of yet. Keep an eye on the two Repsol Hondas, 4th place and 5th place respectively. And of course Colin Edwards behind him and Casey Stoner in his home Grand Prix. Not having the best of Grand Prix's and also another Australian there in 8th position. It's Christopher Mullin a score. Simoncelli really hard on the brakes there. Right boot dangling out to the floor there. But we couldn't stop the bike in time to really make the corner. We did have to go a little bit wide but it's not a problem. Still right on the cusp of winning this Grand Prix or at least, stay, uh, at least keeping Valentin Rossi honest at this stage of the Grand Prix but now into turn 8 for the very fast right hander here as well and then position the motorcycle to the left hand side as we get a little bit out of shape there going into Lukey Heights for the third time of asking as we'll then power it down into the downhill section going into turn 10, turn 10 excuse me a little bit of a stutter and almost a big moment I almost say uh, <laughs> a racing stutter if you will as we almost went into the back of Valentino Rossi certainly don't want to do that if, we're, if we can avoid it but going into the left hander now into the final corner for the third lap will come to its completion as turn 12 is beckoning a good acceleration but unfortunately the rear tyre just beginning to heat up ever so slightly as we cross the line it's another brilliant lap it's a 127 325 for the man on board the Grassini San Carlo Grassini team Honda back in the day of 2011 but Christopher Mullen is currently in last place and also eighth place the fastest man on circuit a 127-290 for the man on board, the Rizla Suzuki. So, amazing job of the Mulin, if, if you will. I mean, 
Eight, eight riders is technically last, but hey-ho, never mind about that. Don't worry about it, as we get way out of shape. Going into turn four for Honda, a little bit messy there for Marcos and Mancelli. Kind of how he used to ride, very aggressive and not afraid of any contact or any sort of battle whatsoever. Certainly a brave, confident young man before he passed, of course. But now to the left for turn seven. And then chuck it to the right-hand side, keeping it nice and tight to the apex here. Getting into the slipstream of Valentin Rossi as he's just pulling away ever so slightly. He does just... Oh, Rossi's now touching the rumble strip on the left-hand side into Lukey Heights is a recipe for disaster. And the seven times world champion at this stage has gone down in a terrible, terrible manner. That was a really tough crash. And going into the rumble strip at that speed, it's... Nah, not going to happen. It, MotoGP 21, it was even worse. But MotoGP 22... A kind of fair, but I don't think touching the rumble strip there was a very good idea. I think he lost the front after touching that, and unfortunately, the end of the Grand Prix for Rossi. Well, actually, he's still on board, and he's still in eighth position, so we'll track his progress, but he's so far behind, I don't think he's going to do anything in the next three laps. But out of the doing corner now into turn two for the Southern Loop. Lorenzo, somewhat closing, and never mind somewhat closing, he's already there. Lorenzo is through. Fantastically done from the future world champion at this stage. I guess it's the 2010 Yamaha, really the year he won back in the day, but now a cross into turn four for Honda. This one is certainly getting a little bit too tight for comfort. Lorenzo's really getting out the elbows now and super sick, of course, not shy of contact as mentioned just a few laps ago. So Marco Simoncelli versus Lorenzo and Danny Pedroza is not out of this as well. Could Pedroza be uh, upsetting the apple cart between the Honda and the Yamaha? We'll soon find out with a few more laps and there is the Fiat Yamaha of Lorenzo still in the picture on the bottom side of your screen as we get a little bit out of shape touching the rumble strip just like Rossi did in the previous lap you've seen how things started going a little bit AWOL for the uh, for the young man for Marco Simoncelli and now to the left hand side there has been a crash behind Casey Stone is out of this one Stone on his home Grand Prix not good the home cooking didn't certainly didn't help him today Hopefully he'll be going back and having a wonderful meal after this end of this Grand Prix. But for now, Lorenzo right there in second position. Desperate to get on through on Simocelli. But I tell you what, I made things rather interesting here by choosing the soft option rear. It's been a mistake. You can really see it now. The left-hand side of the rear tyre is wearing extremely quickly. We have absolutely thrashed it, especially going into turn 12. That is a corner that absolutely chews away from the Michelin tyre. Might have been Bridgestone back then, I guess it was actually. As we now go to the left-hand side, into Stoner Corner. For the uh, sixth time of asking, we've got to get this right now going into Honda. As we go firm on the brakes, it's a little bit wide, a little bit out of shape. And going into the long lap penalty there, that's how far away Simoncelli was this particular time around. Lorenzo has taken over at the front, but Simoncelli fights back. Beautifully done. Absolutely stunning performance. Pushing Lorenzo wide, classic block pass on the part of the tyre that is really suffering now. The Grassini Honda man is doing everything in his power now to just try and hold off Jorge Lorenzo. It's not an easy task in absolutely any way, shape or form, but Pedroza has inherited the second position. What can he do on board the Repsol Honda, so factory Honda against uh, satellite Honda at this stage of the race? Davizioso not really featuring in this podium battle yet. But he might get closer if this battle at the front begins to exchange the paint exchanging and everything's going off in this particular Grand Prix. It's certainly getting interesting and entertaining towards the end of this Grand Prix. But penultimate lap is now complete as they charge down to the first corner for the final time here in the Australian GP. So into turn one we'll go for doing corner. Three and a half tenths of a second is Simoncelli ahead of Danny Pedrosa. Of course, a teammate he would like to have in the future, but unfortunately never happened but never mind about that for now left hand side will go into the southern loop Pedroza positions himself perfectly Pedroza has taken the lead his smaller stature certainly paying off here of course the rear tyre for him has certainly got a lot of life can't say the same thing for Simoncelli as his rear tyre is quite the opposite but we still manage to position it up into Honda into turn 4 and 3 tenths of a second goes to the way of Simoncelli once again quite the ding dong of a battle We've got on our hands right now, but to the left-hand side, getting a bit out of shape is Simoncelli. Oh, Pedrosa. Whoa, he really wanted it then. Really stuck his nose and everything else in there, but it just didn't go through. Simoncelli blocked it, and a block pass. He's going to have to slam the door shut and barricade it to stop Pedrosa from getting through now. 
to the left-hand side for Lukey Heights and going into turn 10 for the final time of asking we have been superior into this particular section of circuit and four tenths of a second five tenths of a second even went up to six tenths of a second just for a brief moment that's how quick we were into turn 10 but Simoncelli looks to have this one to the left hand side they'll go for the final time of asking for turn 12 one tenth is the gap surely Pedroza can't beat us in the slipstream bring on the acceleration bring on the power with still power setting two and across the line Simoncelli holds on for first position his first victory in MotoGP 22 but guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a flashback to the past. I wanted to try something different, and as I mentioned earlier, I was using Marcus Simoncelli, and I thought, why not make a good old-fashioned video? But uh, apologies, I'm a little bit tired for this one today, guys, so if I stuttered or stammered, my apologies. But upon that note, thank you very much for watching anyway. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.